Good morning, Papa Spring. God bless you this fourth Sunday. Certainly the Lord is good to us and we're still standing. We're still clothed in our right mind and have the health and the use of our limbs. We're just blessed in the Lord and highly favored. This morning, uh, we know that it's Communion Sunday and uh, before the service is over, we want to do communion. Those of you can prepare as I talk, uh, get you and your wine and your bread, and we will eat and drink together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This morning, hey, I just want to talk a moment, amen, to let you know what we're trying to do. Uh, we realize that, amen, the governor and many other people, the uh, president, have uh, opened up some of our churches and opened up some of our masks and places that we can go worship. But I was led by the Holy Spirit that we at Papa Spring will look to the hills from which come our help and know all our help coming from the Lord. We trust in the Lord with all our hearts and we lean not to our own understanding or anybody else, but in all our ways we acknowledge the Lord knowing that he will direct our path. So the Lord laid on my heart that we would uh, probably would not even uh, reopen Papa Spring doors until about the last Sunday in May. Unless the Lord say something uh, different. But we will be continuing broadcasting, amen, on YouTube and other amen stations. But we want you to know that God is still good and He's good all the time. Before I forget, I want to thank all of you once again for your giving, amen, that we can continue to do what God would have us to do. We have five ways that Pastor Spring you can give, and one of those ways that USPN mail. Uh, you can log in to a website at wwwpsbc and click on Give. Or download Giveify app uh, on your mobile phone. You can add to your bill of pay as well. And insert, I mean, in the slot on the door. Amen. Still in there. You can put your offering in there. We want to thank you. I love you so much for what you're doing. And a lot of you have given more than normal just because you know what we're going through and what past is going through. So we thank you for that. This morning, bow your heads for a moment. Father, we thank you for this day. And we pray if you bless the message this morning that, amen, coming from Psalms 85, 4 through 12. Bless us, O oh, Heavenly Father, to hear your word and be able to let people know that God is still in the blessing business. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, say we pray. Amen. I'm praying this morning to all our friends, our listeners, those of you that have been listening to us. We're looking at Psalms 85 and 4. It really restore us again, O oh God, our Savior. And put away your displeasing toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generation? Will you not review us again that your people may rejoice in you? And show us your unfailing love, O oh Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God has to say. He promised peace to his people, his saints, but let us then, amen, not return back in the churches and back in the world foolish. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in all the land. This morning, I just want to talk for a moment, as he said in this 10th verse, he said, love and faith, faithfulness, meet together, righteousness and peace, kiss each other, amen. Faithfulness, amen, sprang forth from the earth and righteousness looked down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give you Amen. What is good, and our land will yield its harvest. This morning, 
Uh, the message is talking about, are you ready for restoration? Amen. In other words, are you ready to be restored? God is going to restore this land. He's going to take this virus away. But we got to be ready. We got to be, amen, in, in gear. We got to be in, in pain to know what the Lord wants us to do. And I believe he, want, he don't want us to come back in the church the same way we left out. He wants us to come back in the church, amen, doing what he would say. I'm reminded in 2 Corinthians, he said in 714, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal the land. Now this passion, amen, gives us, amen, four clause. Amen. It said, if my people, which are called by my name, and many other things it talks about, it talks about wicked ways, and amen. And it talks about healing the land, and God will do that. First of all, let me ask the question. Uh, we need to ask ourselves, who among us doesn't occasionally, amen, feel battered and bruised? First of all, I'm so thankful that the God of perfect vision and unlimited, unlimited resource doesn't give up so easily on battle and bruising people. Uh, you see Psalm 85 describe people who were a perfect candidate for respiration and the God who is able to restore. No matter what you've been through, God can restore you. I don't care what you love, God can restore. All you got to do is continue to trust in the Lord. He tells us, looking back, amen, the Bible said, looking back, amen, on what they had done, and how uh, the Israelites had messed up, God, amen, had put them in exile. Amen. He put them in exile because of what was going on. The setting and likely after the Israelites had Amen. Return from 70 years of exile. Their punishment for rebellion against God. Amen. They went through it. And when you rebel, amen, against God, some things that you're going to have to undertake. And I just believe, I might be wrong. I'm not the genius on this, but I do know God. I just believe that there's some things that our whole world could do better. There's some things I can do better. There's some things you can do better. So when we come back into the church, let's come back in ready, able, and willing to do the will of God. I'm noticing, amen, how people have been giving in their offering. They're doing better. They're giving more, amen, because, amen, they realize everything I have could be taken away. But God is still leaving us a resource that we can move, amen, and do what is pleasing in the sight of God. Looking back, uh, these brethren, they were able to see his favor, including his forgiveness. They were motivated to ask God for his help and to expect good things from him. They believed that even though they had went through some things, if they would go back to the Lord and ask him for help, the God in which we serve, he would do just that. And I don't care what we've done in life. If we just go back and say, Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking you to have mercy upon me. I'm asking you to, amen, bless my family. Bless all of us that we may do what is pleasing in your sight. I believe God would do just that. So my brother and sister, I'm going to ask you the last question. Who among us doesn't occasion to feel Amen. Battered and bruised, broken. And sometimes it's because of some things we've done to ourselves. Something that happened in life, we bring it on ourselves. But God has given us an opportunity to make it right. He give all of us a second chance. So we ask him, Amen, God, to have mercy upon him. But because the Lord is good and, Amen, faithful, Amen. God, uh, he will restore 
Amen. He will bring restoration and forgiveness to those who have fallen. Amen. Those who have humbly come to him. Amen. Are never without hope. No matter how long you've been doing things, God will forgive them. With open long, he welcomed those who turn to him. And those who do, they find safety in his own. So my brother and sister this morning, Papa Spring and our visiting friends and those of you that listen to us on our way, amen, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, help me not to ignore the sign that restoration is needed in my life. I don't know about you, but I need restoration. I need his help. I need his, amen, his arms of protection that will take care of me. So, Pope Spring, as I get ready to close this morning, let this Sunday be a Sunday, amen, a respiration in your life. You know, we notice we always give communion on the fourth Sunday, and all of us maybe don't have it, but those of you that do, we're going to still go through the motion of our communion, and then we're going to take that, and we have prayer, we'll close out. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, and remembers of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whoever eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day Today, it will never lose this power. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valleys. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength, gives me strength from day to day. It will never. It reaches to the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valleys. Oh, yeah. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never lose.
it will never lose its power. My brother and sister, we often do communion on the fourth Sunday. And this Sunday, we're still going to do it, even though we are on YouTube. I want you to bow your heads, and those of you, some of you may not have it, but those of you that do, take this unleavened bread. Jesus blessed that bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, take heed. And he broke it and blessed it. He said, take heed, and they ate together. Then he blessed the cup and gave it to them. This is my blood that was shed it for you, and they drank together. And after which he told him, carry ye here till I come. The Lord is on the way back. And I pray that you be ready to receive him when he comes. He's coming back again, just like the rushing of a mighty wind. So I pray that you be ready to receive him. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for helping us to know that you are the God of our salvation. You are the God that heals us today. We ask we the Father that you will bless these our family, our members, our friends at Papa Spring and many other churches, Love Life and all the churches, amen, that we know. Pastor Grace Washington, my friend, have mercy upon her. Dr. Callaway, my friend, have mercy upon him. Many, many, many others have mercy upon them in the name of Jesus. Bless Brother Doug Stiles, amen, in the loss of his mother. Oh God, we pray that you just bless the many churches that we know that are struggling and going through these trying times. But we ask in the name of Jesus, if you have mercy upon us, look down on us with our pity, touch us with a thing of love. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen, Amen. And amen. God bless you, Papa's friend.